that sows in tears shall surely reap with joy. How many people are sowing in tears today? The Lord declared in the book of Psalms chapter 126 verse 5 to 6 that once you sow in tears you will reap with joy in Jesus name. Amen. La 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 Want to go? Though you say that you are the best, I believe. So 
every seed in effort that you have sown in obedience to the word of God, you will reap in joy in Jesus name. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus, every seed that you have sown in your marriage in tears, you will reap in joy in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus, every seed you have sown in your children's life in tears, you will reap in joy in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus, every seed that you have sown into your education with tears, you will reap in joy in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus, every seed you have sown into your career in tears, you will reap in joy in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus, every seed that you have sown into your life in tears, you will reap in joy in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Now I want you to be saying with your mouth, Lord, every seed that I've sown in tears, in any areas of my life, begin to mention them. I will reap with joy. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every of your effort towards your career education, towards your children or marriage, will not be wasted. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Every of my efforts into my children's life, into my marriage, into my ministry, into my, uh, my, my, my life, I will rip with joy. I will rip with celebration. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every seed that I've sown in tears into my ministry and calling, into my children and marriage, into my life and finances, I will reap in joy. I will reap in joy. In the name of Jesus, my efforts will not be wasted. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You will pray this before we go into the another one before we go to the into the message. You will say, Oh Lord, my Father. Let the rain of mercy and favor fall upon every effort that I've made into my children's life, that I've made into my calling of ministry, that I've made into my marriage and finances. Let them begin to yield results. Let the rain of favor and mercy from you fall upon every of my efforts in whatever you do begin to pray. Whether you are doing making effort in sports, in academics, in education, in career, in your marriage, I command in the name of Jesus. Let the rain of mercy and favor from God begin to fall upon your effort to bring increase and multiplication and joy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Saama koze ima ali kora ima akenza ima kote morumbuli ma. In Jesus' name we pray. As I will be enjoying the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you because you are Lord and there is no like you. Amen. We thank you for you are Alpha and Omega, the yes, beginning Lord. and the end, the first and the last. The we thank Jesus. you, Father, for the manifestation of your love, grace, and your spirit. We thank you for you are here in our midst, for your words and where two or three are gathered in your name, you are present in their midst. We thank you, Lord, for your angelic protection and the blood coverage. We thank you for your spirit that made us and your, your breath that gave us life. We thank you, Lord, Father, because you are faithful. Glory be to your name. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for confirming our words and performing our counsels. Glory be to your name, Father. We thank you because you have not put us to shame. You are the Lord that you are was with Samuel, and you are with us, Father, and you will not let any of our words to fall to the ground, that all people will know that you have sent you have called and sent us father we give you glory oh lord Amen. we pray that your name be glorified here today Amen. we pray that every soul will bow to you to listen to you today Amen. we pray that every spirit of, of this 
uh, of misunderstanding, distraction, and confusion be arrested and keep kept in hell where they belong. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. We pray that as I open my mouth today to speak, you will fill me with your word, your wisdom, and your knowledge, Father. And you will give me a word and a language that the enemy will not be able to contend with. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. That after I speak today, Lord, my word will bring people to have faith in you and not to have confidence in themselves, Father. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Thank you because you are faithful. Amen. Have your way, take control. In Jesus' name, I command that every spiritual and satanic gatekeepers to every soul of mine today to give way for the King of Glory to go in through his word today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the Hallelujah. highest. Amen. The Lord is good indeed. Love of money, the root of all oh. evil, which by God's grace will be concluded today. It will be concluded today. So we know what money is. We know what the love of money is today. We can distinguish between, between working for money or loving money. So loving money is when you can do anything and everything for the sake of making money. That is the love of money. Everybody works to have a living and to make a living and to be successful and reach according to the will of God. But when you don't want the will of God, you want your own will in anything that will make you successful according to your will, that is the love of money. And Solomon said, uh, money answered all things. And we said, it does not answer it all things. And we give our reason that money cannot buy us joy. Money cannot buy us, can you, cannot buy you divine health. Money cannot buy you long life. Money cannot buy you love. It can buy you beautiful men and women, but it cannot make them love you. Money cannot de deliver your soul from hell. And money cannot buy you a place in the kingdom of God in heaven. So we also move to let you know during the time, the course of these 10 weeks or there about that we have been studying this, money also, we had about the facts about those who love money. So we, we said that those who love money can never have enough of it. No matter how much they have, they still want to have much more than what they have. Those who love money cannot love God. And number three, the riches that come, sorry, the richer, they become the greater their commitment and expenses. Number four, those who love money make foolish and silly mistakes and make wrong decisions that make them lose the money or even their life. Number five, we say, no matter how much money to, they make, you make, you will not take a penny of them out of this world. None of them, no amount of money will bear with you when you depart from this world. Number, seven, number six, lovers of money always demonstrate no integrity as their loyalty is always towards whatever goes, whatever brings money. So people that love money, they don't have integrity. They are not loyal to anything or anybody. They are only loyal to what will give them money. Those are how to identify those who love money. Number seven, lovers of money are very unstable in decision. They, own, they are very unstable. They, that is because they are in tech, they are loyal to what brings money. Therefore, they are very unstable. They can say white today and say black in the morning. You see, they can agree to something today and say, I change my mind tomorrow because they have seen better offer somewhere. So, lovers of money have no stability. They are very, they are very what? They are very irrational. Lovers of money are very what? They are irrational in decision. They can say black now and say white tomorrow. And number eight, we say those who those who love money may lose their lives untimely. And number nine, we say love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Love of money is what the is the root of all kind. And we name those evil as, namely, fighting, quarrelling, war, terrorism, insurgencies, prostitution indecency, immorality, nudity, unfaithfulness, dis, 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 dishonesty, lies, killing, violence, ritual killings, political killings, assassination, kidnapping, cyber crimes or internet fraud, 
harm robbery, theft, corruption, divorce, and separation, uh, perversion of justice, hatred, bitterness, greed, envy, jealousy. These are all the things that happen as a result of love of money. And we were told after that, now what can we do as a church, as an individual? Number one, we say we, we must trust in God more than our ability and money. Number two, we say we must seek God first and his kingdom and every other thing will be added unto us. And number three, we say we must be careful of what? Of the traps. Of the traps that the devil set for those who love money. There are many traps that are set with money. Many traps are set what? with money. So don't fall into any of them. Think twice when you see or hear any opportunity. Is this from God? It was a trap to capture me. Be careful. Number four, we say, we must be contented with what God has given unto us. Why we walk steadily and patiently to receive <coughs> blessings more from God. Because a little drop of water makes what? A whole ocean. We should not quickly go to for ocean when we have not seen drop of water. It can only lead to trouble. Number five, we say, we must be faithful and committed to what we do. Whatever you do, no matter how little it's what you do, be what? Be faithful to it and committed to it. You see, be faithful to what you do and committed to it. It is the it is the will of God that a little flock become what great in the future. Amen. Amen. Number six, we say we must beware of the get rich quick strategies of the devil of the world. There are many get rich quick strategies or cut short, cut corners to ministry sources, to financial sources, to breakthrough. Be careful that you will not fall into trap, into gimmicks, that you will not be ensnared to hellfire because of your desire to cut corners. And number the next one, we talk about the men of integrity in the Bible so that we can learn from them. We saw the integrity of Naboth, the owner of a garden that uh, Ahab wanted by all means. You see, he has integrity. He will not dispose his land for anything because it has sentimental value. Therefore, no amount of money can buy whatever has sentimental value. There are some people that are broke, they sell it with their wedding ring. They don't have integrity. How can you be married and you sell the bond of your marriage because you are broke? You see, there are things that are unsellable. You can't sell them. Because when you keep them, the person that give them to you will be happy to always see you enjoying them. You see, it's one thing to give you a cup. The person that gave you that cap wants you to see the cap on you all the time. They are happy whenever you wear it. They are happy that they are fulfilled that at least this man or this woman loved the cap I gave them. But somebody give you a cap, the next day you just sell it. Or you just give it away. So they are not happy. They think maybe you didn't like or you don't appreciate what you are giving. So you must have integrity to everything that you are giving. So we saw the integrity of Daniel. We saw the integrity of Peter. We saw the integrity of Joseph. We saw the integrity of Job. The integrity of David. The integrity of Moses. The integrity of Paul. There's no time to explain them further. We will finish up this message today. But you can listen to them more in other previous messages if you are just coming across this one. So we have part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what, you need to go through them again. The love of money. I do not expect any member of the Way of Christ Evangelical Ministry after I haven't listened to all this to fall victim of the love of money again. The purpose of preaching is not for me to just record and send it to us to listen. The purpose of preaching is to what? To teach us things and uh, we'll put them into practice. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the next one we saw also the how the love of money affects how love of money affects what the the family how love of money affects family that is the earthly church how love of money affects the earthly church and we started by treating our family first we started by treating family first that is god we as we said in that place that sorry the errors of the earthly church we talk about the God that God is not a magician to provide magical what? Magical what? God does not provide magical 
money. He's not what? He's not a magician. Then we also say the family also, the marriage, we also saw how marriage, I mean how money affects or cause marriage in the, I mean cause trouble in the marriage. We saw division. We, in marriages, we saw divorce. In marriage, we saw trouble, financial trouble. In most 90% of every marital trouble starts from what? From money. Managing money. Making the same decision about money. That's where they start from. So we also saw uh, the how it affects the sowing and reaping of a church. How the church introduced the method of sowing and reaping of money. In the church, we also saw the enforcing enforcement of a payment or giving members of the church levies to pay in the church, enforcing payment of members in the in the church. Those are the things we saw last week, and we started last week by the commercialization of gospel. In other words, selling gospel, selling gospel. That those are how the love of money affects the church as the body of. Of Christ, the last one that's the last one we we're discussing last week that is a selling of gospel, or in another way, commercializing gospel, making gospel a commercial. Commercial means buying and selling of gospel, buying and selling of things in the name of Jesus. Now, we started by looking at how do we buy and sell in the church. How do we buy and sell in the church? The first one we discussed last week was. Working for commercial gain. Putting every effort in the church for only commercial gain. You may be doing a work in the church, a choir, a pastor, and any workers of the church, but whatever you are doing is motivated by money. I want to be remunerated. I want to be rewarded financially. That is not according to the will of God. Number two <laughs> that we also mentioned last week was sacrificing for profit. When you sacrifice your life, your time in the church, in the, in the name of the, in quote, the service of God, but you have profit making in your mind. You are, once there is no profit, then you discourage and you just lose hope and you don't continue anymore. So that is what we see in the church. We are now looking at how the love of money make the gospel a commercial entity. That is the business part of church or as organization. That's what we are. We have started to look, and I said we'll finish this week. So we, we did the first two last week, and we read Philippians chapter one, verse fifteen to seventeen, and the first Timothy chapter six, three to six, and the third one where we're going to start today is application of business formula in in strategies for church growth. When we apply business formula for our strategies of church growth in the church, then we are selling the gospel. I remember I was in a pastor's fellowship some years ago. I was in a pastor's fellowship and the, the organizers of the fellowship, they invited some speakers to speak. Now the chief speaker, one of the teachers that they taught us that there is young pastor that just started ministry some years ago. That has been about eight years or nine years now. And the man was saying that, see, <coughs> gospel is business. No matter how you look at it, it's a business. And all of us are business owners in the gospel. And therefore, you need to describe or you can design a strategies to attract your own customer. Are you listening to me? Yes. He's saying you need to do what? To design your, your strategies to attract your own customer. You see that? That was what he, 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 thought, he thought that day. But I was not part of the people that bought the idea. Now, by the time he started speaking, he was talking about uh, uh, a Christ, he, he was using the illustration of the shop. He said, for instance, in any supermarket, you see the sweet, the chingum, and all those peppermints. They are they are they are they are, they are stationed or arranged in the lower part of the shops. Um, in other words, during the out when you are going out, you see and they are very low. He said the reason why they make them very low is that children will be coming with their parents to the shop. They will say, I want this. Towards where you pay money, that's where they always put them. He said they have a reason for doing that. Because when children come, or you yourself as a parent, you would like to pick sweet, or chingum, or all those things, one of those things. And they have strategies for arranging everything in the shop according to 
they are they plan to attract their various customers. He said, then he said further, he said, church, we are in church, we have competition. We have everybody in different ministries and churches on the street and all that. You need, therefore, to design your own program to attract the kind of people you want to speak to. So these are the things he was saying, he was saying, he was saying. At the end of the day, I did not believe it. I did not accept any of his teachings. But many of the people that were in attendance really enjoyed it, and they, a lot of people actually put that into practice in their ministry. But I would never put such things into practice. Because for me, gospel or church is not a means of making money or to make me rich or to make me famous or popular. I had many things I could do when I was younger to make me famous and be successful. In fact, I was on the path of many of them. According to people that will know me in my, 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 uh, my, my younger uh, uh, stage of my life, I had a lot of things going on for me. So I did not need gospel to be famous. I did not need gospel to be successful or to have money. <coughs> so to me, gospel is, a, is a, as an assignment. I am called by God and sent to preach. So it determines whether, whatever happened to me. He alone determines whether the ministry is big or small, whether I am famous or not, whether I'm successful in it or not. He determines everything. I don't have to. How can God send you and you begin to plan your success and victory and blessing by yourself? So if you are doing this, you are doing what? You are commercializing the gospel. If you are organizing this uh, church as a business strategist to attract your so-called customer instead of soul, you call them customer instead of soul. You are a businessman. You are not a preacher. Anybody that does that. Does that. Yes, amen. Number four. Number four. Uh, let, me, let us read some Bible passage in number three before we move to four. Second Peter 2, 15 to 22 quickly. Second Peter 2, 15 to 22. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray. They forsook the right way and gone astray. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Baal. They followed the way of Balaam, the son of Baal. Who loved the wages of unrighteousness. He loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity. He was rebuked for his iniquities. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice. Uh -huh. Restrained the madness of the prophet. Uh -huh. These are wells without water. These people that behave like this, that, that sell gospel, they are wells without water, yes? Clouds carried by a tempest. They are clouds that are carried by tempest. For whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. You see, those people, the kingdom of darkness in hellfire is preserved for them. Sellers of gospel will kingdom of hell wait for them. No matter how many, how much they travel across the world, no matter how big their ministry and congregation is, the hellfire is waiting for anyone that use business strategies to run church. Yes? For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness. They will be speaking in big grammar, but the Bible says they are empty. Their grammars are empty. They don't pass any godly information to anyone. Yes, they are lured through the lusts of the flesh. They are lured through the lusts of the flesh. Through lewdness. Yeah, through lewdness. The ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. Yes. While they promise them liberty. They promise liberty to their congregation and followers. They themselves are slaves of corruption. Even they themselves, they have been enslaved by corruption and they are promising followers liberty. For by whom a for by whom a person is overcome. Yes. By him also he is brought into bondage. Yes. For if uh, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, after they have been born again many years ago, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus through Christ, through the knowledge of the truth, through Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. And they now became secondary sinner, and the sin overcame them again. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. And the way they are living now is even worse than when they were living in sin. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. He said it would have been better for them for not to be born again at all. Than having known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered to them. Than to be born again and later on they will not be engulfed with corruption, greed and love of money. But it has been, but it has happened to them according to the true proverb. He said, "This is what has happened to them." There is a proverb that says, "What? Yes." A dog returns to his own vomit. A dog has returned back to his own vomit. And a soul, having washed to her swallowing in the mire. You see, <coughs> may the Lord have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Amen. How can God save you? You become born again. Then you now become a sinner in the church again. Because a sneer into the sin the second time again as preacher. We must be very careful. 
God, the Lord has died for us and he took away our sin once and for all. You see, and therefore we must be careful not to enslave ourselves again because we have been set free. According to the book of uh, the word of God, the book of Romans in chapter, chapter 6. You have been delivered. Don't long, no longer do what? Ensnare yourself again by greed, covetousness, and the love of money and the work for gain. Number four. Number four, the setting up church ministry. Setting up church or ministry with financial gain in mind. When anyone sets up church or ministry for financial gain in mind, is a commercial minister. Is running whatever ministry or church for financial reason. Therefore, the person is commercializing the gospel. The gospel. For instance, what I mean there is that when you are a pastor or a minister, you are looking for an invitation. You are just desperately looking for an invitation. You, even some minister even practically write churches. Please invite me. I want to bless your church with the word of, and they send sample of their preaching to them. Just like a footballer will send video clip so that they can be taken. Then they are sending samples of their preaching to the ministry and writing letters around. I am not speaking fictions. I'm speaking realities. I have had ministers doing this. I have been close to ministers doing this. Sending letters to churches that they can be invited. Why are they doing that? Because they have financial trouble. They say, if I can speak in five churches in a month, I'll be able to take care of my bills. A pastor was saying in my presence one day, many years ago, he said, I, I have an invitation from Switzerland. If I can preach at about three churches there, when I come back, we'll, we'll sort that trouble. Can you see that? They travel for gain. They minister for profit. The purpose of their traveling or administration is money. They are not going to bless. They are going to be blessed. That is the purpose of their trip and administration. The church of God has bastardized the gospel. Giving so much money. A lady was saying the other day, a, 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 a man was invited to sing in a crusade. I don't want to mention the minister that sang in his crusade. Sang only in the crusade of not more than three nights. At most. I don't know how many might, but one, two or three, but they don't do the crusade more than two nights or three nights. And the pastor gave him $10,000. He's not the one that sang for all the hours. Hour, so just for ministration, a few minutes that you go and sit down. And some other people will come forward to do their own. But for coming to sit, only him, apart from other people that are invited, only him got $10,000. And the dollar was paid in Nigeria, not in America. Paying somebody dollars in Nigeria. Paying somebody in dollars in Nigeria. No, no, no. $10,000 for singing for a few minutes. And after then, another pastor, the one that invited him. See, the pastor that he, that he sang there was not the one that invited him. A pastor invited him to sing in his friend's crusade. So the one that invited him gave him 3000 But the pastor that organized the crusade did not know they had paid him. So he gave him another 10000 making 13000 in two nights or three nights. Now, this is why they are very busy looking for inv invitations. And once you invite them, they charge you. Can you pay? If you cannot pay, they do what? They don't come. They have prices. You, what I know this because I organize crusade. So once you contact them, say you want to sing, they will give you their prices. You, you will not be able to pay. If you are just starting like somebody like me and you are struggling, you will not be able to pay it. You just look for your own people that will sing there. This is how bad... The gospel has become. We call it the word of God. Some people call it ministry. My ministry. It's not your ministry when you are charging for it. Ministry is what you can do for free. Once you finish, once you, you don't charge, you don't do anything. And once you finish, they give, if you see the money is too much. Say, what have I done that you are giving me 10000 Only two nights. Please, take this and give me this for me. It's too much. Then you are encouraging the pastor that you don't waste God's resources. Because this money you are giving only me, you could pay three of us. It, it's too much. It's too much. We can share it. And you are teaching them in the early how to manage God's what? Resources. They are God, these people, they were not rich when they start ministry. 
They didn't see those kind of money. It is the ministry that gave them that money. Therefore, all the money and God's word, resources, teach them to manage it. The message you pass to them, they will learn next time say you don't waste God's money. Someone, a minister go to preach one night in one program of two days, one night and another Sunday, and get it seventy thousand dollars. Are they footballers? Even footballers, they don't get they don't get seventy thousand dollars in two days. We must be very careful. It is good to be blessed, but when you are getting what you don't deserve, you need to tell the people giving to you. This is too much. It's what? It's too much. It's God's. Now, if we if about if we are ten ministers and they gave only me that kind of money, what about other people? They will give them equally. So therefore, they will be organizing meetings for people to actually contribute what money because they need to make profit. If I begin to receive it and just disappear, which means I'm encouraging them to be thieves and robbers in the church because the money they will want, we want to raise is from people that can attend the conference and the meetings. They want to make profit too, so they will invite important ministers that like that have names to come so that they can make all their money and pay them from the meetings we must be very careful don't allow little thing to send you to to hell may the lord have mercy on us number five selling of anything with the name of jesus selling anything and putting the tag jesus to it and god holy spirit selling ordinary water i told us last week some people just put waters. They import it from Switzerland. Imported water from Switzerland. Well packed. And the man says the water has arrived. I made this for you. How many people watch that on the internet? Some people watch it, yeah. The water has arrived. I make this to, this, to remove. To, do, uh, to clean the mess out of your life. And you see the way they were rushing it. A small bottle that can cost only a few amount of money. It's cheap bottle of water selling is five thousand naira one small bottle so the anointing and the prayer make it very expensive a bottle of water that costs nothing less than 50 naira 100 naira is sold for five thousand because anointing and jesus has entered it may the lord deliver some people Amen. even in england here people are selling they call it miracle park they put lock soap in there lock soap the one that is tiny you know if you have gone to hotel you have traveled you have stayed in a hotel before you see, there are small, small soap they put in hotel rooms. Small, small soap. They put, it can be locks, it can be any soap. They are tiny. They just put it there for you to bath only one night or two and go. Because you are a traveler, you just come and stay one or two days. Those are the kind of soaps people put in this pack. And, and perfume and oil. And they call it Miracle Pack. Because they want it, they, they are tiny, tiny, tiny. Tiny bottle of oil, tiny bottle of uh, or perfume because they need to finish cooking for you to come back again. The fools that buy them, I call them fools. How can you go and buy a pack and say you are buying miracle pack to put perfume whenever you are going for interview? You fit your body, or you are going to somewhere you want favor, and you put the cream. Say ah, today I'm going out. Favor locate me, mercy find me out. Look, you are fool when you do that. So you can no longer speak to your father. Or you don't know that you have a father. Some Christians don't even know that God is their father. They want somebody to rub something on their body before they speak to their father. Any Christian that still believes in collecting oil and perfume and soap is a fool. He's not a Christian. Those people will have, they will just be laughing. Say, the fool, it's this, a, a, a man and woman, madam and uh, pastor and pastor, they will not be busy in the home when they are packing. They say, Please, please, Elizabeth, pack this thing very well. The fools are coming tomorrow to buy it. They don't want to pay tithe and offering, but they will pay 35 pounds for each of these. Behind you, they call you a fool. But when they see you, they call you brother and sister. Because you are bringing 35 pounds to buy each of those packs. And they have factory in their home as pastors and pastor misses. Manufacturing and packing them to bring to church for people to buy. Why wouldn't they do that? Because you fail, you don't want to pay tithe. You don't want to pay offering. Then you encourage them to be selling you things that are bigger than offering and tithe. The Bible tells us, remember the Bible says, because they do not want to worship the living God. Therefore, they worship things that are lesser than God. Because you don't want to obey God to pay tithe and offering, therefore you will visit these people and they will collect bigger money from you to trick you 
and to deceive you by magic that they call God. <coughs> there are lots of magic outside today. They are not God. God is not a magician, I told you last week. Let's move quickly so that we can finish today. Matthew 21, 12 to 13. Remember, we are talking about selling anything in the name of God and Jesus. Matthew 21, 12 to 13, what does it say? Matthew 21, 12 to 13. Yes. Then Jesus went into the temple of God. Jesus went into the temple. And drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple. He chased out all the buyers and sellers in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers. He overturned the table of the money changers. And the seats of those who sold those. And destroyed the seat of those who are selling those. And he said to them. And he said to them. It is written. It is written. My house shall be called a house of prayer. This is a house of prayer, the house of God. But you have made it a den of thieves. You have made it a place where the thieves live and sell, and, and sell their what they loot from people. Look at that. It didn't even say, it didn't say, it even say they, they make it a place of selling goods. It said the dens of thieves. Because these people are thieves. Any minister or preacher that sells things in the church, they are thieves. And wherever they do this, is a den of the thief. And you will find out the reason why I say so when we get to some place today. I don't just speak except what the Bible says. Matthew 21, 12 to 13. People that sell anything, water, oil, what handkerchief that they call mantu. And when you tell them, why are you selling handkerchief? They say, oh, no, I want you hear that the mantu of Peter and Paul, he the, and the shadow of uh, Paul, mantu of Peter. Are you Peter? Is that a mantu that they use? Is that is that handkerchief? Did Peter sell his own? Eh? Did, did, he, did he sell his own? No. He didn't sell his own. No. Why are you selling something and you say it's a mantle of John and a shadow of Peter? What is your business with them? May the Lord have mercy on this generation. May God have mercy on this generation. The way they think and what they do. Some people sell, they preach, and they, as I'm preaching now, they have many equipment to record their message. And as soon as the message finish, they, they produce several MT3, MP4, videos and audios and they be, when i saw a church one day they have an aspect uh a department of the church where, that look like supermarket i'm not exaggerating i can mention the name of the ministry you can go and find out the place where they sell every of the thing look like supermarket they have outlets like supermarket where they have machine and cashier set down different outlet and people line up in each of them Initially, I thought they were buying food like supermarket. I saw they were buying tapes, books, anything that they produce by this, this minister of God. And they make a lot of money. Apart from tithe and offering, millions go into that ministry by selling tapes, selling audios, selling um, uh, pay, uh, books written by the man, everything that they wrote. And they make a lot of money through that. And that's how they are millionaires and, and have jets and the rest. I don't envy that kind of lifestyle. There are, there are things that don't envy in ministry. You see, all the things that can envy in life to be is to be like Jesus and his disciples and apostles. That is most important to me. And do not envy the sources of the corrupt ministers and those who are making errors, committing errors. May the Lord have mercy on us in Jesus. Like I said last week, if you cannot give whatever you are producing for free, it is better you, you do what? You say, please listen to me very well in the message. Listen to me, because if you don't listen, I will say, then you have to be careful to ask your member to listen to you. You don't sell. You must give to them free if you want to produce. Make it available to them. Say, those who do not listen to me, later, uh, later on I will send you free audios. To listen to me you can even pay for those ad audios you don't need to make it free online make it physical print it and give them if the ministry can afford that if you cannot afford it let them go online your website to go and download and read for themselves or listen themselves but not for sale <coughs> that's what i have time for that place because my time is running now i have to go to number six because i have nine of them i'm going to number six and number six is a little bit long and it's marketing oneself a ministry and not Christ. There are people that market themselves. They market themselves very well. They market their ministry very well, but they don't market Jesus. Jesus is not, is not part of their deal. 
but they, they only mention the name of Jesus when, when there is need. But they market themselves. They want to be known. They're pushing themselves. Pushing their names on the Facebook, on the Twitter, on the Instagram, and whatever, on the YouTube. Pushing. Pushing. You will know practically that this ministry is pushing to be known. This pastor wants people to know him. Pushing but not pushing Jesus. Not pushing the truth. Preaching lies in deception and making yourself known to be like a super preacher is those people that sell themselves. <coughs> they are not selling Jesus. Pushing your name and ministry and when you are not pushing Christ is when you are marketing yourself and ministry. John chapter 3 verse 6 says, For God so loved the, the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. No, it was God that gave his son. And his son did what? He gave, he gave his own life in exchange for our what? Salvation. No pastor gave their soul. No evangelist gave his life. No bishop gave his life. And therefore, we have to always showcase the person, the God that has given himself for the sake of salvation of humanity. We are your servants. We are servants, laborers. You know what they call laborers? Servant, people that are called to let the, this gospel known to people. We were called to let people know this gospel. We are not the ones that die. We were called to make the people know about this gospel. And we must focus on, on the gospel. In John chapter 3 verse 34, it says, Those who are sent by God, they do what? They deliver God's word unto the people. Because they are servants and they are what? They are laborers. They are given assignment. And they continue to discharge the assignment according to what? The best of their ability. And also, in the book of uh, John chapter 15, uh, verse 19, I want somebody to see that. John 15, 19. And we are going to read again John chapter 12, 49 and 50. John 15, 19, what does it say? If you were of the world, the world would love its own. If you, John chapter 15, uh, sorry, John chapter 5, verse 19. I mean, John 5, 19. John 5, 19. Yes. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Yes. The Son can do nothing of himself. Look at that. He says the Son cannot do anything of himself. But what he sees the Father do. But what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does. For whatever the Son does. The Son also does in like manner. Sorry, whatever the Father does, the Son does in like manner. Look at that. That was the message Jesus gave us when he came. That everything I do is what the Father wants me to do. And that is whatever he wants me to do, that is what I do. But is that our own case? The minister of today. We don't do what God wants us to do. We only do what feels better for us than to make money and to have fame. Jesus, the one that, is, that died for the gospel, said, I came that I may tell you about the love of the Father. And he was going about telling everybody about the love of what? The Father. But in our time, Jesus said, go and tell people about the love I have for them. The same that I share with the Father that make me lay my heart, I mean my soul, for their salvation. Then we now come, we begin to make that assignment to make money. And we don't do what he asks us to do. We only do what to bring the money. A day is coming that we will stand. Every minister will stand that judgment. The judgment of, God, of the Lord will be very fierce and very, very tough on that day. People will seek to disappear on the queue. They will not be able to go anywhere. People will seek. Imagine, people will feel like we on the body, on the queue, when they see God's, God's judgment. The day to repent is now. Tomorrow is too late. We must do the purpose, fulfill the purpose that we were called. Jesus preached about the Father. And we must tell the world about Jesus and the Father. Not about us. Not about Samuel and Joel. But about the, about the love of the Father. And about the death of his son. That is the purpose of the gospel. Not anything that will make me have money. Not anything that will make me have favor. I don't need to speak to you in the way you like it. So that you can give me money or favor. All I want to feel is the love of the person that sent me. That is what matters. When Jesus came, he did not care about money. He did not care about fame. He did not care about favor. What he cared about is the love and the fulfillment from the person, from the God that sent him. No wonder 
the greatest miracle that ever happened to this world. The greatest evangelist, the greatest bishop, the greatest apostle that was Jesus, he only had 120 people at the upper room where he died. 120 converts in his ministry. Can you imagine that? Greatest miracle ever done. Raw miracle. The disciples and apostles always pray. But sometimes Jesus will turn the person saying, you are healed. You are forgiven. And they have received their healing. Then, the kind, that kind of Messiah had only 120 people that are converts for him. Where are the 6,000 that ate bread? Where are the, sorry, 5,000 and the 4,000 and the other 10 that ate bread? I was expecting when Jesus Christ died, they would just gather about at least minimum 3,000 to receive the Holy Ghost. Because it is those who receive the Holy Ghost that are actually the converts. Isn't it? Because the Bible said the Holy Spirit is given for those who have received the gift of salvation. So we knew, I mean, we know that it was only 120 people Jesus was able to gather. Because they did not believe in him. But he didn't care. What he was concerned about was to do what? To sow the seed to the next generation. Whether they believe or not, the next generation will talk about what he did. And that's what we're talking. That's the reason why immediately after he departed, Peter preached and there was 3,000 that God converted. Because the seed was sown in Peter, in John, in Stephen, in the rest of them. The seed of salvation was sown. Amen. Amen. In John, we have, read, have you read John 12, 49 and 50? No. Quickly. John 12, 49 and 50. John chapter 12, verses 49 and 50. Yes? For I have not spoken on my own authority. Listen to that again. He said, I have not spoken by my own authority. But the Father who sent me gave me a command. Oh my God. <laughs> These are the things that motivate me. He said, I have not spoken in my own authority, but the Father that has sent me did what? The Father who has sent me gave me a command. You see, I only speak about the command of the Father that sent me. Not by my own authority, yes? What I should say what I should say. What I should say and what I should speak. And what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. And I know his command the commandment of the Father is what? Everlasting, everlasting life. life. Yes? Therefore, therefore, whatever I speak, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. So I speak. Just as the Father has told me, so I do what? Speak. I speak. Do we speak as the Father has told us in this generation? Do we speak the word of God to the people? Do we speak the mind of God to, the, to, to our people? But we speak what they will love so that they can give us. Gift. We deceive. We don't tell truth. That is what preachers of this generation do. They don't care about what God sent them to say. They only care about what they will say to receive blessing and reward. They will stand before God one day. They will answer their role one day. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the time shall be no more. Where what? And the morning break. Where the morning. La 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 and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up, I'll be there. When the roll is called up, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On the bright and cold that morning when the dead in Christ shall rise. And the glory of his resurrection shed Where the chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky And the roll is called upon the habit When the roll, when the roll is called I will be there when the roll is called up Will you be there when the roll is called up when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to set his up. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our walk on earth is done, 
And the road is called up yonder, are we there? Will you be there when the road is called up yonder? I will be there when the road is called Will you be there when the road is called up yonder? When the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. The only way to be there is to do whatever he asks you to do. To speak his word to the people. Look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 4 and 5. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 4 and 5. Look at what Apostle Paul says regarding what Jesus Christ said here. Paul also says similar things. Similar thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. What does he say? And my speech and my preaching. Look at that. Apostle Paul said, my speech and my preaching, I do what? Were not with persuasive words. I do not, I preach without persuading people of with my word. Of human wisdom. I do not persuade people with human wisdom. But of demonstration of the spirit and of power. But I speak to demonstrate the spirit and the power of God. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men. So that the faith of my audience will not be in the wisdom of men. But in the power of God. But to be established that everyone I speak to may grow daily and establish in the power and the, and, uh, of God and to have faith in the power of God. That's what Apostle Paul said. In other words, I only speak what he tells me to say. I do what he has me to do. I go where he has me to go. Where he sent, where we go. Wherever he sent, that's where we go. A man, a, 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 an evangelist sang a song and I love. He says, wherever he has me to go, I'll go and I'll go with him all, all what? All the way. All the way. Anybody remind me Samson? I'll go with him all the way. Where he sends me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, where he leads me, I will follow him. I go with him all the way. If you love money, you cannot follow him faithfully. If you love love money, you cannot go with him all the way. If you love money, you will love life more than him. And you cannot be fulfilled. Whatever you do will be truncated and adulterated for the sake of love of money. I thought it will finish today, but my time is gone and I've just done half of what I want to say today. So it's better to do the rest half next week. Before, if I go to the half now, I will have another one hour, which will make us too late. And I've promised and I'm standing by covenant of finishing timely. And I've been doing that for a while. Yeah. And I pray for God to help me more. To keep to time. I don't mind extending messages to the next time. But I don't want to keep you more than the 2 o'clock. So exactly true. I want my message to finish. If we have to pray, you have to be another 5 minutes. And i let you go. Which I'm doing right now. So I want you to be speaking to God. Lord, send your spirit into me. In the book of... Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 that's where we're going to pray from I finished my message I just want us to pray two minutes and you go Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 what does it say and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart. And the heart of your descendants. And the heart of your descendants. To love the Lord your God with all your heart. To love your Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul. And with all your soul. That you may live. That you may live. You see, if your heart is not circumcised by God, you cannot love the Lord. If you do not have a circumcised heart, you cannot follow the Lord all the way. So you are going to pray today. Lord, circumcise my heart. Lord, circumcise the foreskin of my heart. 
that I may love you sincerely, that I may serve you diligently, that I may reign with you in your kingdom. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Circumcise the foreskin of my heart, O oh Lord. Circumcise my heart, Father, that I may love you wholeheartedly, that I may obey you sincerely, that I may reign with you in your kingdom. Lord, I need to have circumcision. In the name of Jesus, your word says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, that except a man's heart is circumcised, he will not be able to love the Lord. That I may be able to love you with my household, Father. Circumcise our heart, Lord. Lord, circumcise the foreskin of our heart in the name of Jesus. Father, come and dwell in us. Come, O oh Lord, Holy Spirit, and reign in us that we may be able to obey God, may be able to walk with Him diligently and faithfully. We may be able, O oh Lord, to love Him, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, circumcise us. Father, circumcise me. Begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, I need transformation from my heart. In the name of Jesus, I need transformation from my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I want my salvation to be deep rooted in my heart. In the name of Jesus, Zaama ko zaima ha kan zaima haliko re ema a kan zaima ko te murumbuli ma. Begin to commit your week now before the Lord. Say, Lord, this is another new week. Father, go before and after me this week. Protect me and my household. Protect my children as they go to school this week. Permit no evil disease or sickness to accompany my children back home from school. Lay your mighty hands on my children. Soak them in your blood. Let your blood, O oh Lord, be insecticide to destroy every virus around my children and my home and family members. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Father, provide for us and meet all our needs. Father, create open doors that no man can shut. Father, let there be open heaven that no man can shut. In the name of Jesus, whatever we lay our hands on to prosper, anything we seek, we will find this week. Any door we knock shall be opened unto us. Anything we seek from man shall be granted unto us. This week, in the name of Jesus, we will not die but live to declare your works and your glory. In the name of Jesus, for your spirit has made me and your breath has given me life. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me and my household all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name.